quickly before we move on, just due to the urgency of it, what is the actual steps that we should take to avoid antibiotic resistant bacteria problems? So I'm going to talk about other things, but just to get that out of the way, what, what are the actual solutions that we should be doing? Well, the, the first thing is to know your risk. How dangerous are superbugs to you? If you have a normally functioning immune system, they're not that big of a deal. I have a normally functioning immune system and I walk into the emergency room every single day treating patients with superbug infections and I'm okay. What I see are people who have medical conditions that alter their immune system or take medications that weaken their immune system and they put them at risk and they don't know it. They don't know that they have a medical condition that leaves them vulnerable. There are undoubtedly superbugs in this room, but you're not going to be harmed by them. There are 5% of doctors have superbugs on their white coats. Terrifying statistic until you realize that you've got so many different ways to protect yourself from your skin, your immune system, uh, a variety of mechanisms within your body. Now, when my father-in-law got cancer and went on chemotherapy, he became high risk. And we took all sorts of precautions. So the idea that you read an article in the newspaper that says that somebody swabbed the meat in the frozen, you know, the frozen meat section and that it was teeming with superbugs, well, you're going to bring that home and put it on the grill. Those superbugs are going to die and you're going to be okay. So it's a very sophisticated issue that can be simplified down to having a conversation with your doctor and saying, how's my immune system? And if your doctor can't answer that, I tell people, maybe you should get a new doctor. And um, I, think, oh. I think it's also uh, important to, um, to realize, I remember uh, doing research on uh, the antibiotic resistance, and basically about 15 years ago, the statistic was that 50% of all antibiotics that are manufactured are given to humans and 50% are given to livestock. And then it went up to 60% and then to, to livestock and then 70% and then 80%. The last I've read was between 85 and 90% of all antibiotics that are manufactured are not for humans. They are for imprisoned cows, pigs, chickens, turkeys, ducks, geese, goats, and, and other animals that are imprisoned for food. So this is really uh, obviously where most of the antibiotics are being used and where most of the antibiotic resistance is happening. And so it, it's very clear, I think, at a fundamental level that animal agriculture is demonic in the sense that it's, uh, it's, uh, perver it's a perversion at the, and a, a terrible transgression at the foundation of human society that we're imprisoning all these animals completely unnecessarily for food. There are no nutrients that we need to be healthy that we have to imprison and kill animals to get. Right? I've been a vegan for 40 years. I have not been to a doctor in 40 years. I've stayed out of the medical establishment completely. <laughs> and, and I'm not the only one. I mean, in, in general, if we have a strong immune system for eating healthy food and exercising properly and having a positive mental attitude, so, I mean, health is very complex. There's many factors involved. It's not just food, obviously. There's many factors. but. Uh, if we're really uh, living our lives, I think, as, as best we can with awareness and consciousness and kindness and so forth, then we have a foundation for health. And animal agriculture destroys the health of billions of animals, right? And that's what it's all about. It's confining these animals. They're living in toxic environments. They have high rates of disease, of cancer. Uh, that's why all these antibiotics are used and all kinds of medications, over 10,000 different drugs and hormones and chemicals that have been approved to be used on these animals. So they're very sick. And then we're eating these sick animals and we get sick. And so our immune systems are, very, are compromised, obviously, by this. But we're also sowing, and you think about it, uh, from the point of view of as we sow, we reap. If we're doing something that is so perverse and violent and unnatural to imprison animals. And this earth is beautiful and abundant. There's no reason for us to be imprisoning billions of animals in hell holes uh, for any reason. It's something that's been going on. It's been happening. We're born into it. But it's really past time for us to awaken and uh, respond to this in a way to bring it to an end because this, this, this superbug problem is just one of 
of hundreds of devastating impacts that are harming us on every level. I mean, everywhere we turn, we see human justice problems that are caused essentially by animal agriculture, starvation and hunger, which is unnecessary because we're growing plenty of food to feed everyone. Uh, there's, there's countless ramifications of this, and this is just one, but to uh, really clearly understand this and then share these ideas with other people in a way that they can understand and hopefully awaken out of this uh, cultural trance that's really injected into all of us from the time we're born here, where we've been forced to eat animal foods, and to realize that this, this has to be the last generation that engages in this perverse behavior, and to now awaken out of it. I think that's, that's the essential solution to this problem. I would just add, um, well, First a comment and then a question. So the comment is that last year 30,000 Americans died from antibiotic resistant infection, bacterial infections, 800,000 people worldwide. And that problem is forecast to accelerate as more bugs become antibiotic resistant. But Matt, I did want to ask you, um, thanks to your work, um, Will just quoted the statistic of the percentage of antibiotics that are used in livestock going up and up and up, and last I had heard it was 80% as well. But um, has that actually gone down? What, do you know what the current number is? Uh, so we've made progress with certain animals and taken dramatic steps back with others. So cows, we're having some problems. Chickens, we're doing a little bit better. Uh, again, a lot of this has to do with the lobbying groups. Um, the, the thing I will say is that you know, we come from very different perspectives. You know, I'm essentially the medical establishment. I went to Harvard Medical School, I teach at a medical school, and I agree with every single thing you said. Um, it's not uh, talked about. Uh, I, I believe that nutrition and diet gets maybe half of a day in medical school lectures for the entire curriculum, but Absolutely, the ways to protect yourself are things that have to do with the holistic view of your body. You know, getting a good night's sleep, cutting out alcohol, eating a plant-based diet, these things can really go a long way, um, a lot farther than some of the supplements that people ask me about. Um, and not to say that they're, they don't work, but to say that, you know, I, I really just, I was struck by what you were saying uh, in terms of how to view this problem. And even though we come at it from different places, uh, there is a whole lot of overlap. Um, just to clarify, did you say that 80% of all antibiotics that are used are used in animals? Is that, is that what you said? In, in the United States, 66% worldwide was the last statistic I had heard. Yeah, but the, I don't know the, if I don't, it's changed. I actually don't have the most recent data on this. One of the challenges we have is we don't have a good handle. We have a good handle on how many antibiotics doctors are prescribing. We don't have a great handle on dentists. We're trying to do a better job of understanding that. And we also don't know how many people are getting antibiotics illicitly on the black market. You know, it's not that hard to go to get antibiotics in Mexico. Um, and so we don't really know the full scope of the problem, but the numbers that you're citing, uh, are very concerning and they, they sound accurate. So worldwide, are we giving more antibiotics to uh, animals than to humans? Yes. Separating the question of whether you should eat animals or not, if you did choose to eat animals, is it necessary to give them antibiotics to grow it? If someone wanted to raise chickens and cows and pigs, can it be done without giving them antibiotics? Yes, certainly can. Uh, it's more uh, a, you look at these places that do large scale uh, meat producing animals, they have this huge organization, this huge process where they are essentially jailed, as you mentioned, and they pump them full of antibiotics to make them as big as possible. But it is not an essential aspect of their lives that they need these antibiotics.